Law Warrior Aerotech, Seeker Class Dropship. The Seeker Class Dropship's mission is to carry a full scout battalion into hostile territory, and so it's been designed to operate independently of other supporting vessels. At a mass of 3,700 tons, it is one of the largest and most maneuverable dropships in its size and weight class, due to its quad Rantec 720 fusion drive system. As a steroid type dropship, the Seeker must rely completely on its drive thrust to stay in the air during atmospheric conditions. Unlike the aerodynamic design of the Aerodyne dropship, the spheroid is generally unstable and so requires constant thrust vectoring to keep it from tumbling out of control. The Seeker's interior is divided into three major sections. Running through the centre of the dropship's lower two sections is the dropship's heavily shielded fusion power plant and engine core. The lowermost section contains the ship's enormous vehicle bay. Alongside one of the ship's two loading ramps is a tall area that can hold a pair of battle mech cubicles, each taking up to 150 tonnes of the bay's vehicle carrying capacity. Under normal conditions, the vehicle bay can hold up to 50 light vehicles, with a maximum mass capacity of 1,000 tonnes. This deck also contains all landing gear machinery and a pair of small weapon bays. The Seeker's middle section also houses an unusually tall cargo hold that can accommodate up to two battle mech cubicles if needed. Normally, the bay is used to carry extra vehicles, supplies or equipment for the transported unit. Also located in this section are the main fuel tankage, heat sinks and a pair of aft-directed weapons bays and ammo storage. The topmost section is divided into four decks. The bottom deck contains the ship's engineering, control center, its batteries, heat pumps, backup generators, coolant reserves, machine shops and spare parts storage. The next deck up contains the waste recycling plant, the laundry, life support systems and storage for fresh water, ammo, food and repair parts. The next deck contains the remaining troop bay, the crew quarters, separate crew mess and equipment storage. The bridge and the combat operation centers are also here. The topmost deck contains the docking collar, avionics, forward weapons bay, communications gear and more batteries. The Seeker's engine core is equipped with four small fusion reactors, which makes it easy to repair and maintain the vessel in the field. Because each reactor is independently operated and shielded, engineers can work safely on one reactor while the other three are still operating. This system also conserves fuel, as three reactors can be shut down while the fourth functions at low power. When full power is needed, this single reactor has enough output to restart the other three, a process that requires around five minutes to perform. The Seeker carries its passengers in three bays, each of which is further divided into three small sub-bays. Each sub-bay houses a single platoon of scouts or a squad of motorized infantry. There are normally four triple-tiered bunks in each sub-bay, with small personal gear lockers at the end of the room. Each bay contains a single large washroom that's shared by all three sub-bays. A set of small double occupancy quarters are set aside to accommodate an additional 12 personnel. The Seeker is equipped with a fairly extensive med bay for handling most emergencies. This gives the ship a strong support role for its passenger troops and allows it to operate independently. The crew of the dropship is housed in tiny four-person bunk rooms with a single washroom for the entire crew. Each quad occupancy bunk room has a pair of double bunks, a fold-down table, and four large personal storage lockers. The Seeker was designed as a forward reconnaissance ship to scout out a planet. Its construction reflects this need for independent operations. The design includes large spare parts stores, extended food supplies and water tankage, and large ammunition storage bays. The ship was also equipped primarily with energy weapons to make it less dependent on ammunition. The dropship's lack of fighter bays is probably its greatest weak point. In the absence of fighter support, it must often depend upon its own inadequate firepower to ward off enemy fighters. Many Seekers have been lost in solitary encounters with such. To remedy the situation, many Seekers carry a pair of aerospace fighters in the vehicle bay. Though it isn't designed for small craft launching and recovery, it can be converted. Because the ship isn't equipped with proper recovery equipment, however, both the dropship and fighter must have exactly zero relative velocity. Small craft recovery takes two to three minutes longer than on other fighter-equipped dropships. Seekers, I think, are ones that aren't 
mentioned very often, if at all, to be honest. They're certainly important craft, and I bet you some of you are interested now in learning about this aspect. So as it says, it's a spheroid class, it's 3,700, it's 88 meters in height and 90 meters in width. It has a crew of 20, carries 1,350 ton of cargo, which is equivalent to about 64 light vehicles, or 48 light vehicles and 4 battle net cubicles, and 120 troops. It's equipped with two PPCs, two LRM-10s, three large lasers, six medium lasers, and three ton of ammo for the missiles. It's a quad Rantec 720 drive system, and was first introduced in 2815, and according to the book, is sighted quite rarely. Uh, as such, it has an armor factor of 480, 90 on the nose, 85 on the right, 85 on the left, 135 on its fuselage, and 85 on the engine. It has no weapons on the nose, PPC on the sides, the rear side says an LRM-10, large and two mediums, and the aft has a large and two medium lasers. So, yeah, interesting, cool little dropships, good for campaigns that some people run, obviously, having something like this, or a few of them are necessary for scouting operations, being able to invade a planet, scoping out the enemy, dropping troops onto, the, onto like a remote area of the planet first to set up uh, forward operating bases, or being able to do scouting and raiding. These are the dropships that would do these kind of operations. You wouldn't have like a union or whatever burning into a system and then dropping off units. It's things like the Seeker that would be dropping off troops, or probably alongside other smaller ships like Gazelles and Fury classes to get those initial scout forces in place to, uh, ahead of the main force, essentially. So uh, I'm glad I finally got round to some of these uh, other dropships because uh, there's a lot of them out there and very few of them ever really get any time shown in things like MechWarrior and Battletech, uh, the PC game Battletech, or Mech Commander. Dropships are usually, again, as I said with the Gazelle, they're kind of set dressing. They're there to look pretty or be this like big monolithic thing, or, you know, they drop off units, but they're never really, never really explained very well. That's why I always sort of feel sad that they've, no single developer, or even at the back in the day, like FASA never really pushed a company to ever make an Aerotech game. And just think about it, even, you have really good space games out there at the moment, you've got things like Nebulous Fleet Command, slightly older games like Battlestar Galactica Deadlock, where you could make a really interesting turn-based or real-time RTS. Homeworld is a great example of such as well, of being able to have a space combat game set in a, an interesting science fiction universe. There's nothing to say that you couldn't have a really cool, um, you know, Battletech-related space combat game. Uh, where you are using things like dropships and the like to, you know, attack objectives. I, you, the mission takes place in a system where you need to punch through the enemy picket line, get your dropships down onto the planet, kind of thing. And you know, you've got your warships and your fighters and stuff like that, because you can set it either during the Star League Civil War when there were all the warships around, or you know, in the techno technological rebirth after the Helm Memory Core, but you can have warships, you can have like big grand space battles and stuff, and there's no shortage of warships and dropships and jump ships and fighters and stuff in the Battletech universe, all of them just waiting for that opportunity to be let loose, and I think they could do some really good stuff with that. Uh, it's a shame, it probably never happened, because unfortunately aerospace, as important as it is to the in-universe function, because no battle mech gets to a planet without a dropship, but there's just, oh, sadly, I don't think there's enough call uh, f for amongst the fan base and amongst developers to really be interested in making it. It's probably not seen as a financially viable route, so it falls to a mod team, and that's a hell of a lot of work for a mod team to put together. So, sadly, I don't think we'll ever see a proper aerospace Battletech game, but hopefully... Hopefully, there's some out there who might listen to these things out the small few hundred that do, or a couple of thousand on occasion. Maybe maybe one of you is a developer at a studio that, you know, you might be able to put that out there. Who knows? Maybe it'll happen. If not, it's a nice idea. And there's... God, there's so many bikes going past there. Anyway, have a good day, everybody. That's my ramble over, and I'll, uh, I'll see you all next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.